Welcome to our number two of the morning after live right here on a Tuesday on Sports Grid and Sirius XM channel 159. That's where you're listening. It's also the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM. Thank you for watching all across the Spiz Grizz network. That's Sports Grid. And I am Ben Stevens. My favorite sport is college football. A ton of football in store in our number two. It's another brum. Win Total Tuesday right here on the morning after. Megan Payton will join us for a couple of segments coming up in this second hour. And to end out, hour number two, it's another major championship. The fourth and final this week at the home of golf, St. Andrews in the Open Championship. The 150th Open Championship at the home of golf at St. Andrews. And Tiger Woods is in the field. It feels very cosmic right now over there in Scotland. We'll have Dubs Anderson joining us for a full breakdown of every angle you need to know for the Open. But again, we start in college football, my favorite sport. And as we have seen here over these summer months, really dating back to last summer as well, conference realignment has been a focus where everything right now in college sports, especially college football, is trending not to a power five, which we still kind of have, but to a power two. Two super conferences, if you will, the SEC on one side, the Big Ten on the other. How does that relate to this year's odds for the 2022 College Football Playoff National Championship? To end out hour one, we shared with you the three best odds to win this year's national title, all hail from these two conferences. Alabama is the favorite at plus 180. Ohio State has seen positive movement in this marketplace. Now the second best number at plus 300. And the reigning national champion, Georgia Bulldogs, only trail the Buckeyes by 50 cents at plus 350. All three of these teams within less than $2 of each other. But let's look at the SEC versus the Big Ten and the true national championship contenders entering 2022. So Alabama, Georgia, two of the three best odds to win this year's national championship. You add in Texas A&M at 25 to 1, three of the six best prices to win this year's national championship coming out of the Southeastern Conference, where, of course, it just means more. And the SEC, in the eight years of the college football playoff, leads all leagues with the most appearances, 10 in total, for the CFP. Alabama has seven. Georgia has two. LSU has one. When Georgia has made the college football playoff both years, Alabama has been there as well. Five of the eight college football playoff national championships have come from the SEC. Alabama has three, Georgia has one, and LSU in 2019 as well. And the SEC and the college football playoff, because they have played one another a decent amount when they have not played an SEC foe. So the SEC versus other conferences, the Southeastern Conference in the college football playoff era is 12 and three in the playoff. Yes, rather dominant. Ohio State won the first ever college football playoff national championship. And right now they have the second best odds to do that again in 2022. Plus 300 is the number. Just about two and a half weeks ago, the Buckeyes were five to one in this market. Two dollars shaved off that price. Now three to one, the second best price of all teams to win this year's college football playoff natty a quick welcome to our sports grid radio audience everybody now in the mix we dive back in to the college football playoff national championship odds because the sec has two of the three best prices three of the six best odds to win a national championship that's not necessarily the case for the big 10 very big 10 and very upfront heavy with ohio state having the second best price michigan is 60-1. to Of course, the Wolverines qualified for the college football playoff last year after beating Ohio State for the first time under Jim Harbaugh and reaching the first Big Ten championship game, thus the first Big Ten title under Harbaugh as well. The Wolverines now 60-1, to the maize and blue, now the eighth best odds, tied for the eighth best price for this year's national championship alongside Notre Dame. Wisconsin has the third best price out of Big Ten teams to win the national championship, but they're 100 to 1. So as we look at the SEC championship to lay out the path for how maybe Alabama and or Georgia both qualify for a college football playoff again, might we see a rematch of not only 
the national championship game, but the SEC title game that featured Alabama on one side and Georgia on the other. As the odds stack up right now, that seems very likely, at least within the SEC, for that championship game. Alabama, the slight odds-on favorite at minus 140. Georgia, the second-best price at plus 160. Alabama, minus 400 to win the SEC West. Georgia, minus 550 to win the SEC East. Can A&M be competition at 18-1? to As Connor O'Gara shared with you yesterday, one of the best minds in the SEC, maybe a year too soon for A&M. Now, as we look at the Big Ten Championship odds, here's why Ohio State might have seen movement in the National Championship odds because they're minus 200 to win the Big Ten, the best odds of any team to win any conference right now in all of college football. Notice some names, though, like Nebraska, Iowa, Michigan State, and Minnesota, all around 6-1 to one or 7-1 to one to get to 10 or more wins. They will need to get to that benchmark to have any shot of rivaling Ohio State for a conference championship. The last time Nebraska won 10 games, that was 2012. The Huskers won three games last year. Iowa won 10 games last year. They've won 10 games in two of the last three years. We'll go to the NFL up next here on The Grid. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers and The morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley comes over there. Give me the game practice. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. Major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. What do you make of the changing landscape of college sports? College sports is changing at a rate that I think a lot of people are really uncomfortable with. So everybody's trying to figure out what's next, right? But what's now, in my opinion, is really, really interesting because the SEC made this move a year ago and the Big Ten finally answered. And now you're like, all right, finally, it isn't just going to be the SEC versus everyone else. It's going to be the SEC and the Big Ten versus everyone else. The Sports Grid Network. The Pat McAfee Show. I was joking with uh, with a couple of my buddies um, on the squad, and I said, could be a long training camp for the offense. I like the way our defense is, is looking and playing, and, and just on paper, it, it looks like they're going to be pretty formidable. So it could be could be some growing pains for the offense, which would be great for us. It would be nice to, uh, to take our lumps uh, from time to time. The Sports Grid Network. Sports professor Rick Haro inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. NBC reconfiguring its television product. They shut down their regional sports networks last year, and they're offering a direct-to-consumer service. Now, the Olympic Channel, which opened a number of years ago with 35 million homes, key to Olympic programming that you can get only on that particular channel, is now shuttering. But they did say before the fall is over, they will announce a new Olympic strategy. And of course they will. And it will involve streaming. NBC is the most prolific investor in the history of the Olympic movement. And since the games will return to a more reasonable, for the United States anyway, time zone for advertisers with Paris and then L.A., they have to get their act straight relative to streaming. This will be the first step. Sports Professor Rick Haro, Daily Numbers Game.
Drum roll, please. Brum. It's another win total Tuesday. Live right here on the morning after on a Tuesday on Sports Grid and Sirius XM Channel 159. We're back at it. I'm Ben Stevens. She's Megan Payton. And today's focus, the topic MP or win totals for our rookie quarterbacks. And when, depending on that win total, a rookie QB might affect the number. When might they enter if the win total is skewing toward the under? And can they redeem their team to push it back to an over? Tons of fun with rookie quarterbacks here on a win total Tuesday. Hey, Ben, thanks for having me on. We love Win Total Tuesday, and it's fun to dive into these rookies in particular. Uh, if you remember three months ago when the draft was coming around, what was the topic we kept saying? These quarterbacks are awful, and now we are going to be counting on them perhaps to help their teams out. But uh, some great odds here today that I'm excited to dive into. This quarterback class in the 2022 NFL Draft was not very good. Only one quarterback, Kenny Pickett of the Pittsburgh Steelers, was selected in that opening round. And because of that, I guess it makes sense that Kenny Pickett is the favorite to be the Offensive Rookie of the Year in the NFL. That price, plus 550. Desmond Ritter, though, is 14-1. to He has the second best odds of the quarterbacks entering their rookie campaign, but it's tied for the ninth best odds on the board on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Scroll all the way down and you'll find Malik Willis at 40 to 1. These were the first three quarterbacks taken in the 2022 NFL draft. Kenny Pickett in the first round, both Ritter and Willis in that third round. Matt Corral actually has better odds than Willis to win Offensive Rookie of the Year, but we'll talk about Corral and Carolina and Baker Mayfield in just a little bit. So let's start right there with the top three quarterbacks MP taken in the 2022 NFL Draft. And let's start with the first that went in Kenny Pickett at plus 550. Do you agree that Kenny Pickett should be the betting favorite right now to win NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year? I don't, Ben, and I've said this a few times before, but I don't think any of these quarterbacks should be on the top list for Offensive Rookie of the Year because I don't believe any of them are going to have significant yep. starting time unless something major happens. You look at Kenny Pickett at plus 550, the favorite to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, how about Mitch Trubisky, though? Because everything that we're learning, everything mm. that we're reading is pointing us to Mitch Trubisky starting, at least, during OTAs, during mini camp Pickett took the third string reps behind Trubisky behind Mason Rudolph now does that mean everything no it doesn't but Mitch Trubisky has come into that locker room already taking on a leadership role I would be surprised if Pickett gets that week one start now maybe if Pittsburgh's struggling you know and this would be the same even for Desmond Ritter as well in Atlanta if you see right. major struggles happening call it week eight, week nine, maybe you then think, all right, let's switch it up. But what do we know about Pittsburgh in particularly? They're a defensive team. So if Mitch Trubisky can just do good enough to keep them in play, let the defense do the work, you know, they've improved their offensive line, give running back Najee Harris some more holes, I don't think they're going to put Pickett in immediately. Let's let him learn yep. a little bit, not set him up for failure. And then, Ben, if we look at uh, the Falcons with Desmond Ritter, I don't think that uh, he's going to be starting either unless Marcus Mariota is injured, unless the Falcons, which I'm sure we'll get into their team win total, very low. If they are not able to make it to the playoffs, once they are officially eliminated, then that's when I could see Ritter maybe making a start to yep. see, hey, do we have to uh, reassess the quarterback situation in the offseason or do we like what we have with Desmond Ritter? And then we know Malik Willis uh, now kind of an, a crazy pick. Uh, Ryan Tannehill, what is that saying for him? I don't think Malik Willis gets the start in Tennessee uh, this year at all, probably. We'll correlate these odds to rookie of the year two team win totals in just a second because what MP is alluding to is going to be so crucial if Kenny Pickett is worth any bit of value at plus 550. But one final bit of history handicapping, if you will, when it comes to the NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year. Quarterbacks get all the love in the odds board. They get all the love in the marketplace. Nine straight quarterbacks have won the NFL MVP. But that's not necessarily the case for Offensive Rookie of the Year. Four of the last 10, so four this past decade, have played quarterback. That means a majority have either been a running back 
or a wide receiver like we saw last year with Jamar Chase. Rookie of the year on the offensive side is not necessarily a quarterback award like we see with the NFL MVP or maybe even the Heisman Trophy as we go back to the college ring. So let's dive into Kenny Pickett. Plus 550. Again, the favored number to be Offensive Rookie of the Year in the National Football League in 2022. And Megan made a great point. There is a relative level of expectation that Pittsburgh remains successful. 15 years under Mike Tomlin, now for the first time without Ben Roethlisberger for a good portion of that tenure. But 15 years under Mike Tomlin, the Steelers have won at least eight games every year the Steelers have made the playoffs two straight years and that was certainly not because of what Ben Roethlisberger was doing at the quarterback position so you look at that seven and a half win total I agree with Megan I think for Kenny Pickett to start it would mean the Steelers struggle early on and that Trubisky is not the answer but if they hover around seven eight maybe even nine wins MP and Mitchell Trubisky is that day one starter then I'm not sure how much playing time we'll see out of Kenny Pickett in his rookie campaign yeah, Ben, I, I completely agree. And I think, uh, you know, I made a video about this actually a couple days ago with the Steelers is they're kind of that underdog team because what do people like to see? They like to see flashy quarterbacks, receivers, running backs. And and right now the Steelers, they're a defensive team. And you just mentioned Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, you know, he was at the tail end of his career. So no disrespect to Big Ben here, but he wasn't the reason the Steelers made the playoffs last year. In fact, Steelers fans and everyone around Pittsburgh was begging for them to put Mason Rudolph in. Mike Tomlin keeps yep. Ben Roethlisberger in, and they do slide their way into the playoffs. No losing season since Mike Tomlin has been there as their head coach since 2007. As you mentioned, uh, two straight playoff appearances. I don't think Mitch Trubisky has to do a lot in order to maintain his starting quarterback role. Now, I do think it's going to be one of the more, uh, we'll call it QB battles that we're going to see in training camp. Uh, there, yep. There's a chance that Pickett comes out and, and he's like, you know, a foot above uh, Mitch Trubisky and they go all right this is what we're going to do maybe they're a little bit more flexible than they were with call it Ben Roethlisberger they didn't want to just throw in Mason Rudolph I don't think Mitch Trubisky is going to get the same respect as Big Ben having said that Ben I just don't think that there's going to be a whole lot of things that Mitch Trubisky has to do in order to gain that right. starting role the Steelers had a top five defense in 2020 in both scoring defense and total defense that's how they made the postseason but even last year, when their defense was not nearly that good, bottom five in terms of total defense a season ago, they still made the playoffs. And that's the calling card for Pittsburgh this year. They could have a losing season, the first one ever under Mike Tomlin, and still go over seven and a half wins because that would be an eight and nine record now in a 17-game season. We'll continue this conversation moving forward, but that's why Desmond Ritter is interesting at 14 to one because Atlanta's win total is four and a half it's the second lowest on the board of all teams on the FanDuel Sportsbook that price for Atlanta to win the Super Bowl the second longest the only one longer is the Houston Texans so MP if they only have the expectation of winning four and a half games and they're right around that number and Mariota's not doing anything all that crazy for Atlanta there's where Des Ritter gets in and there's where that 14 to 1 number on a quarterback to win the NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year looks a little bit better yeah, I could see that, you know, Ben, if, like we said, in week eight, week nine, they're eliminated or it's not looking great. You throw in Desmond Ritter. He plays fantastic for six, seven, eight weeks. Then, yeah, I could right. see that happening. But I think that is actually maybe a little bit more likely than Kenny Pickett winning Offensive Rookie of the Year. And better odds. Much better odds and much more value. Megan Payton stays here for a second straight segment. We're talking rookie quarterbacks, new faces and new places. That's up next. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. 
Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Maurice Allen, 2015 2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? McAfee show. What did you think of the young wide receiver? What did you think of Watson? What do you think of Sammy? What do you think about uh, going into the season? Any thoughts on what you're going to have to focus on or anything like that? Definitely look the part. All three of them. All three of the guys we drafted all, uh, you know, have, have physical gifts. Obviously, the top two picks are all uh, uh, bigger, um, Dobbs and Watson. But, uh, but the seventh round pick got a lot of stuff to him. The Sports Grid Network. The Bostonian versus the book. People still don't buy this team's going to be any good. And we got gifts in the last two years to get low win totals. And people said, ah, Derek Carr sucks. Thank you. I've cashed both over bets on the, on the Raiders win total. I'm coming back in again today, this year with the over on the Raiders win total. But I'm going to be more heavily committed to the team because I think the team's got real playoff potential. The Bostonian versus the book. Fantasy Sports Today. All right, now let's go to the outfield, and we'll start off with Mike Trout, who looked like he was on his way to a fantasy MVP season, but my gosh, he's in the worst slump of his career right now, George, over the last month. John Carlos Stanton will start. He, of course, plays for the Yankees. Aaron Judge, no question. And then Shohei Otani, and that's really who everyone will want to see play on Tuesday night. Yeah, but Otani was voted in as a pitcher and the DH, right? So- the Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. 56 and 29. I understand everyone's enamored with the Yankees. But remember, uh, the Astros uh, are rolling in their division. They got 56 oh. wins, and they seem to be able to beat the Yankees every time they turn around. I mean, they beat them last week. Now they're going to play them again next Thursday when they come out of the break. That's the team I'm worried about. I'm not worried about the Boston Red Sox. The Sports Grid Network. quarterbacks on team total team win total Tuesday excuse me and now we go to new faces and new places and what that might mean for wins as well 10 win Tuesday is what we could call it here on sports grid Megan Payton joins for a second straight segment and I am Ben Stevens so MP we're talking rookie quarterbacks focusing on a few actually in the NFC South Desmond Ritter and what that might mean for Atlanta the Falcons and the Dirty Birds a win total of four and a half, the second lowest on the board. Only the Houston Texans have one that is smaller. But the Falcons have the longest odds in the NFC South, where the team right ahead of them had some market movement in their favor. That would be the Carolina Panthers from 12 to 1 just a week ago to plus 950. Why? The Panthers might also have a new quarterback in Baker Mayfield. MP, what do you think Baker Mayfield does for Carolina this year? I think, uh, Ben, he he could perhaps bring a little bit more stability to Carolina. Uh, We talk about Atlanta. We talk about Carolina. They're both in, I mean, we're just going to say it. I don't care what the head coaches say. They're in a rebuilding year. They're trying to figure out what their long-term solutions are. And so Baker Mayfield could perhaps be that answer. Uh, You know, we've, we've heard, we're reading, he's got a chip on his shoulder. He's not super excited about what happened this off season in Cleveland. And now he gets a chance to go to Carolina and compete for a spot at quarterback 
because that's the big thing we have to realize, but it is not automatic for Baker Mayfield to be the starting quarterback in Carolina. I think he's going to have to go head to head with Sam Darnold in trading camp, and it's going to be a long competition. It's going to lead into the preseason. And this is what you actually want to see. This is what I want to see in the NFL is a guy that's hungry, a guy that's ready to play and be competitive. Sam Darnold's over there on the other side, not too happy, just like Baker Mayfield was a couple months ago when they acquired uh, Deshaun Watson in Cleveland. And now Sam Darnold wants to prove himself also. But but if we're really just talking in a broader uh, spectrum, Ben, I think the Panthers and Falcons are both going to struggle a bit this season, even if they've got Baker Mayfield at quarterback. If the Falcons end up with Desmond Ritter, Marcus Mariota, I don't think it's going to make a ton of difference. I think the Bucks and the Saints are the two teams right now leading in the NFC South, and the odds agree with that as well. But this could perhaps be a good answer for Carolina and, and hope to build something long term. And there was thoughts that maybe Matt Corral would compete for that starting job alongside Sam Darnold. Drafted in the third round was Corral out of Ole Miss. He actually has better odds to win Offensive Rookie of the Year than even Malik Willis, who was drafted ahead of him at 20 to 1. But now it's not seeming like Corral will see a ton of playing time with Baker Mayfield in that quarterback room for the Panthers as well. A new quarterback in a new spot. Let's continue to look at that on win total Tuesday. 10 win Tuesday as well for new quarterbacks in new places. Of course, the blockbuster deal in Denver this offseason. Russell Wilson, now the starting quarterback for the Broncos. Matt Ryan finds his way to Indianapolis. Trey Lance for the 49ers. Not a new face necessarily in a new place, but will now be the starter for San Francisco this year, we believe. All three of those prices, MP, Minus money to win at least 10 games this year in 2022. We await to see what happens with Deshaun Watson, but it could be Jacoby Brissett, who now is that quarterback in Cleveland, and Carson Wentz, the starter for Washington. Have fun if you want to play, pay that plus 175 price. I do not. I do not believe in Carson Wentz. So as you evaluate those expectation levels, MP four teams like Denver four teams like Indianapolis heavily favored to win at least 10 games now with Russell Wilson and Matt Ryan there what are you looking at for this upcoming year I I mean obviously Ben we're looking at the Broncos we're looking at Russell Wilson there's a reason why it was such a blockbuster trade it's because you look at Russell Wilson and you think he's a person he's a player that you can bring into your locker room and become Super Bowl contenders now I'm not saying that I'm riding with the Broncos that hard. Having said that, though, you think about uh, Denver's defense, you think about all the pieces that were kind of there, and can a quarterback just be the answer to their missing piece? And I do think that Russell Wilson can be that option. Uh, Having said that, he's got to stay healthy. We know last year dealing with that finger injury, and he's got to improve a bit. I mean, I know a lot of people want to look at Russell Wilson and say, you know, he's one of the greatest of all time, and he has been a fantastic quarterback, but he did struggle last year in Seattle. And I'd say sometimes solely his fault. I know we can look at the offensive line. We can look at the way that Pete Carroll uh, decided to run his offense with uh, Shane Waldron. But I'd say that Russell Wilson can absolutely make Denver contenders. He can bring an element to the Broncos that they haven't had and really that last piece of the puzzle. Then you look at the Colts, and I think Matt Ryan actually might even have more of an impact than Russell Wilson, not because Matt Ryan's a better quarterback than Russell Wilson, but but because the Colts, think about what what they're good at. They've got a fantastic running game with Jonathan Taylor. Let's give him a little bit of break. Let's let Matt Ryan uh, open it up a bit. It. I think the Colts could possibly get to 10 plus wins, not to mention, I believe they have the third easiest schedule in 2022. When you look at 2021 opponents, having said that the Colts still aren't maybe at Super Bowl contending yet, but I do think they have a chance to win their division. And then when we look at the Niners, you've heard it here before, but I do not think the Niners are in any place to really have a successful season right now. I think that this NFC West, apart from the Rams, is a little bit chaotic. And I think Debo Samuel, his, uh, you know, requesting a trade, wanting out, that's going to play a part into the 49ers. Obviously, we know they've got a great defense. I don't think that Trey Lance is going to come right out of the gate here as the starter and really be the answer for San Fran immediately. 
Then we continue, Ben, to the Browns, and we know the chaotic mess that it is in Cleveland. Jacoby Brissett, a little bit of a downgrade, I'd say, from Baker Mayfield. We're probably not going to see Deshaun Watson for a bit. So as the sports books know, too, it's hard for us to bet on the Browns right now, and they've, in fact, taken off so many of their odds. So really, we can't make too much of a prediction for what's going to happen in Cleveland. And then I am all there with you, Ben, with the Commanders. I do not believe in Carson Wentz. I do not believe in the Commanders. Commanders this season. I think this is a division where Philly and Cowboys, they're going to be the two teams that we look at. And I really don't think Commanders are going to have much of a factor in the NFC East. It's very interesting evaluating the juice on both the Colts and the Niners, who both have a win total at nine and a half. And the over is that same price, minus 160 to Indianapolis, minus 145 for that nine and a half win total for the Niners. I could see Indy. I'm still not necessarily a believer in San Francisco as of right now. I even think there's a little bit too much juice on Denver to win at least 10 games. I understand Russell Wilson, but it's still a first-year head coach in Nathaniel Hackett. The defense that was so great a season ago was under Vic Fangio. All that guy does is breathe defense. So we'll see what happens for Denver, and we await what a possible disciplinary hearing result will be for Deshaun Watson when that ruling is laid down. It is rumored that could happen anytime from now until the start of training camp, which Deshaun Watson could be a member of for the Cleveland Browns. So if we don't love any of those prices, MP, maybe some plus money with some teams that have an opportunity to get to 10 or more wins. The Vikings, the Titans, the Dolphins, the Saints, the Patriots, MP, which team stands out to you? You know, I'm looking at the Saints because I've been saying for time and time again, I like the overs on everything with them. I do think that they're a playoff team. I do like plus 135 for the Saints. Um, I think Jameis Winston, this is his year. This is his time to shine. Season cut short due to injury last year. He's now going to have a more secure offense with hopefully the return of wide receiver Michael Thomas out there. You're right. going to see new draft uh, wide receiver Chris Alave, who I think is going to help. He's going to have more weapons, and if he's going to stay healthy, I think this could be a time where we see an improved Saints defense, an improved Saints offense, a healthier team overall, and then the Saints can find a way to get to 10-plus wins. I think as much as yep. we uh, talk about the NFC South, we focus on the Bucks, and of course we're going to focus on them because of Tom Brady and everything that he brings to that organization, but I don't think uh, the Saints are too far behind them. And then the Dolphins is another good point. Ben, uh, you know, all the drama that uh, Tyree Kill brought with Patrick Mahomes and uh, going on the podcast talking about him. I do think uh, at the end of the day, Tyree Kill is going to be a factor in Miami for Tua, you know. Is he going to do better there than he did at the Chiefs? Probably not. I still like the Chiefs a lot better in the AFC conference. Having said that, though, guys like Tyree Kill can make a difference in an offense. Very interesting to compare that price on the fins to that of the Patriots. Their numbers pretty much across the board in the futures market for 2022 in the NFL. Very, very similar. I like the Vikings there as well. And the Saints, their win total over eight and a half, even money plus 100. Just give me that for a plus money price. And of course, if you're going to win 10 games, it sets up pretty well possibly to make the postseason. If the Titans win... 10 games they might win the division in the AFC South and minus 110 right now favored slightly to make the playoffs the Cardinals plus 130 to win 10 or more games minus 105 to make the postseason and Megan let's say it one more time for the people in the back you add Devontae Adams to the Las Vegas Raiders you give me plus 175 to win 10 or more games which they did last year and two to one to make the playoffs they did last year this Raiders team is one to focus on for sure Ben, I've said this with you all offseason. We love the Raiders on everything. You add a star wide receiver, Devontae Adams, to any team, he's a difference maker. And it's a big year for a quarterback, Derek Carr, to show what he can do. I think that, you know, the Raiders are kind of getting disrespected on all the odds books right now. I think that they could perhaps have a better season than the Chargers, maybe even the Broncos. But the Raiders are going to hit the over on eight and a half wins, Ben. This is how you know Megan and I have been doing Win Total Tuesday, maybe for far too long. We see everything the same way right now. No disagreements on the morning after. MP, thank you as always. We go to Scotland, the Open Championship with Dubsy up next.
Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rail. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full need, circle. Uh, all their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for And Godwin being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we have to go to San Jose, too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm going to go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are going to be all good in game six at home. Oh boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination. Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The Pat McAfee Show. It was, it was awesome. It was nuts. Uh, I mean... Yeah, I, I never imagined that it would be what it is, but uh, it, there are thousands of people chanting, and uh, I, was, I was pumped up. I, I really couldn't even feel the pain in my uh, the ruptured tendon. I, I was I was walking on it and putting weight on it, even though it yeah it, it was numb. And I uh, I was I was I was ready. To eat. I could have eaten nails, and I, I, I was hungry. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. A bit of a color splash yesterday across the board at Wimbledon. And it has piqued my interest a little bit because Nick Kyrgios now will turn over and at the FanDuel Sportsbook as I believe a 26 to 27 to 1 favorite here to win uh, the U.S. Open. But I find myself saying, hey, if Kyrgios is playing in the Open, he might be apt to turning it on because even looking at the final there for Wimbledon, if it was Novak Djokovic versus Rafael Nadal, probably never would have tuned in at all. Only on Sports Grid. Pharrell, coast to coast. They have been there forever since before Christ. We call that place the ashtray. The Oakland Alameda County Coliseum is a dump. And I mean, they don't even have water in that building. All I know is, is that they need to move to Vegas. But when I talk to the guys in Vegas, I talk to Sherapan and Pharrell, and they say it won't do well in Vegas. I can't see how it wouldn't be an absolute success. You know, this time of year, there's nothing else on. People are still coming to Vegas. The Sports Grid Network. The 150th time the Open Championship takes place this weekend in Scotland at the home of golf, St. Andrews. So many storylines going into the fourth and final major championship of the year in golf. And we break it down now on the morning after on Sports Grid with the help of our guy, Dubs. Dubsy Anderson joining us here on TMA on this Tuesday. Dubs, so much to get into. If you think it's early for Dubsy right now, out on the West Coast in Los Angeles, joining us here on the morning after, just wait for the call times he will need to follow all of the action this week at St. Andrews. Maybe, Dubsy, you just don't go to sleep and you stay up from Wednesday night into the very early morning hours of Thursday as well. The party has already started, Benny. I ain't getting no sleep. That's overrated, mate. We got... The Open Championship at the home of golf. Big tee shots, Oof. bad bounces. What is Mother Nature going to dish up this week? I'm looking at the weather forecast, Benny, and it's looking like maybe it plays a little easier. Can Tiger Woods make another run and get three wins on the old course? What about Xander Shoffley, the hottest golfer in the world right now? What about your dominant world number one? No one's even speaking about Scotty Scheffler. So many storylines brewing up for this one. What a storied golf course so much history benny i've been to st andrews a few mm. times absolutely love the spot as good as it gets for me i dare say the number one major championship on the calendar this week at st andrews love it the historic nature of everything going into this event the 150th open championship at the home of golf at st andrews one that tiger woods has had circled for many years because he wanted to play 
in the 150th Open Championship at the home of golf in St. Andrews. It feels very cosmic, very poetic, but we also go to the odds perspective here. And Dubsy, you joined us last week leading into the week before the Open Championship, looking at the value in the week ahead of us getting underway. Rory McIlroy at the time was the favorite at a short relative number, 9-1. to one. So movement against Rory, but mainly because Xander Shoffley, the hottest golfer on planet Earth right now, has vaulted up this board. What have you made of the movement and the outright odds to win this week's Open Championship? Yeah, good to see Roy McIlroy uh, coming back up there, but I can't get behind that value. I don't question. I mean, Roy McIlroy, he is in, you know, uh, renaissance form. 2014, yeah. we turn it back to the majors. I love what I'm seeing. I can't get behind that number. Xander Shoffley, how long can the run continue? But look, he is the prototype we're looking for this week, Ben. We, we want a chess player, someone who keeps it in play. Don't worry about distance or bombing it a long way it's all going to be about short game and putting and right now Xander Shoffley he's figured it out he's found that killer instinct late in the Sunday afternoon I'm looking more towards a bit better value here Justin Thomas at 21 to 1 he's coming off a recent win there at the PGA Championship look it's Lynx Golf you need shot making you need grit you need that short game imagination JT has it for me and I think the number on Jordan Spieth I mean it's short but he is the Lynx golf specialist, if you will. He's from Texas. They're used to playing in a bit of wind at 15 to 1. It's a little chalky, but I don't mind Jordan Speak. This is a guy who just figures out how to get himself in the mix. And that's what Lynx golf is all about. You don't have to be flashy, but you have to pull up the right. sleeves and get it done, especially moving into the weekend. But again, Benny, I wanted to see the, the weather really kick up and test these guys. But I think we see maybe closer to Tiger's record of 19 under par, which is unfortunate. But again, it's going to be a short game clinic, putting, uh, putting specialist, if you will. And that's the idea here. St. Andrews is not a very long golf course, just about nah. 6,700 yards. So if it is playing easy, we don't have that classic Scottish summer. These guys can go low, and we might see that with some of the biggest names in this field. And let's start with the biggest name. Eldrick Tiger Woods, the big cat, back at the Open Championship. He missed the U.S. Open for this reason, he had circled the 150th Open Championship at the home of golf in St. Andrews because he wanted, desperately wanted, to be here. He has won three Claret Jugs, two of them coming at St. Andrews by a combined 13 strokes in those two victories. His odds this year, Dubsy, 65 to 1. How do you evaluate Tiger's game entering this week at the Open? Well, look, Tiger tells us this is his favorite golf course on the planet. So he's already leaning on those good vibes. And look, with Lynx Golf, we're big on golf IQ. We're big on experience. Tiger Woods knows this golf course better than most of the field. I look at the field this week. It's not the strongest field because we've got a lot of open qualifiers from all the various tours around the world. I know some guys playing it this week. They're not really up to scratch. We take those guys out of the mix. The previous winners will make up the numbers. And look, it is a short golf course. It's a flat walk, so it's a lot easier on the body for Tiger. He doesn't need the driver so much this week. He can take two iron, poke around the golf course. He knows all the you know the sight lines, where to miss, where these deep fairway pot bunkers are. So I like his chances. You look at his two starts this year, and again, it is only two starts at the major championships. He made it twice, but you know, straight through the weekend. He pulled out of the PGA Championship there on the Saturday. But I like his chances in this one. Uh, at 65 to 1, it's a decent number. I don't think he's going to win on Sunday afternoon. I think maybe the top 40 play at plus 125 offered up by the FanDuel Sportsbook. That's the one that has my attention. Could he push a top 20 at plus 190? He absolutely could. And look, what happens if Tiger gets in the mix and you know the weather kicks up and maybe the winning scores six under, seven under par? Stranger things have happened. I mean, what, what does he do when he's at home in Florida? All he works on is from 50 yards in the short game. That's what we're looking for this week. The driver, you, you can have the big miss. And that's that. That's the thing I'm, I'm not fading this week. You know, if you've got a weakness with the driver, I'm not so much interested. So I think this is going to be Tiger Woods' right. best chance. And I hate to say this moving forward, Ben, this may be his last chance at genuinely being a contender at a major championship. We're not going to get many more sure. golf courses in the Rota or when we come back out here for the US Open, the PGA, where Tiger can really lean on that golf IQ, that shot making, uh, on a shorter golf course, easy on the body. This could be the final hurrah for Tiger Woods. It is a great, great point that Dubsy just made. The familiarity is why Tiger might be able to contend at major championships moving forward. Of course, that means the Masters, because 
each and every year we play at Augusta National. But it's some of these other courses that Tiger knows very well, including his favorite in the world, as he describes it, the old course at St. Andrews, the home of golf. He just looks so happy out there on the fairways, playing until 10.30 p.m. at night with his good buddy, JT and Justin Thomas, just rolling balls all across the greens, messing with Rory McIlroy. All looks very happy right now for Tiger to be at that event. It feels cosmic to me, Dubsy. I just hope he's there for the weekend. And you know I will be betting Eldrick to make the cut. Those odds not available just yet for the 150th Open Championship. But Dubs mentioned another price, a top 40 finish at plus 125. To finish in the top 30, a slightly higher number at plus 190. A top 10, Dubsy, 6-1 to one I, for Tiger Woods. Where do out. you think... Yeah, I know. Easy now there, big cat. I get you. Where do you <laughs> think, though, is the best spot to bet Tiger Woods for this week's Open? I think the, the top 40 are plus money, plus 125. I think that's fantastic. I think... Uh, the top, the top, uh, the thirty there for plus one ninety. I think that's a really good number for a top ten, six to one. I mean, it's not terrible, Benny. Again, but again, if you're going to get him for a uh, top ten, make sure you have a couple of sprinkles there in the outright right. market at sixty five to one. And look, th this is, you know, it could play out that way. If the, if the wind gets up and these greens get really slippery, um, you know, in, in some cases you're going to be putting from seventy yards away, Benny. Maybe thirty yards off the front of the green it's lynx golf you know it gets most exciting once the ball lands you can get some bad yeah. breaks going left to right for some of the younger guys they don't have that experience they don't have that maturity to say okay i've had a bad break but everyone's going to get them this week someone's going to find themselves in a pot bunker take it un unplayable keep on track and tiger woods he's got that poise to him and i think that's why we've seen him have such a successful career it's not going to be one on thursday or friday he's just got to get himself into the mix and Look, in the live betting as well, don't lose sleep on the fact the guys teeing off super early on Thursday. That's the big advantage when we're playing Lynx Golf. We saw it there last week. Everyone's going to come back to the field. There will be regression, early, late starters. So Tiger Woods gets himself uh, into the arm wrestle. It's going to be a marathon. Top 30, top 40, you can bank on the big cat. He's leaning on good vibes, Benny. And we saw that when he came yeah. back to the Masters. When Tiger Woods is happy and the short game's looking dialed, he's a tough man oh. to, uh, to sleep on. I'll never forget that opening round Thursday, one under par 71 for Tiger at Augusta. Again, cosmic in nature. So we're talking about Lynx golf here, Dubsy. It's a different style than we play here in the States. So as we peruse the odds for the top player from Great Britain or Ireland, how comfortable are these players in this environment that we will see this week at the Open? Yeah, I mean, I'll look at the last uh, 10 winners here, Ben. Only four of those have been... American winners, Colin Morikawa last year, uh, notably a defending champ. But this is what they grow up playing. And why is that different? Well, the golf courses are different to start with. You know, there's a lot more runoff. You've got to play a lot more shots uh, from around the greens, bump and runs. It's not just like the PGA Tour, give me my 60 degree bomb and gouge. It, it's a test of who hits it the furthest, who's going to have the best putter come Sunday. So it's a totally different style of golf. And these guys are used to playing. I look at guys like, you know, Tyrrell Haddon, Tommy Fleetwood. We know how good they are, but they haven't had any yeah. success out here on the PGA Tour. Fleetwood's never won. Tyrrell Haddon's only had the one with the Arnold Palmer Invitational. Why? Because they're not suited to play in the bombing gouge. We put them in Lynx Golf, which they've grown up, you know, practicing on, playing on every single day. This is where their strengths are going to be best suited. Um, so I think that shot-making ability to flight different shots, play it under the wind, around the greens, a bit more versatility rather than just going to the 60 degree. And I look at St. Andrews around the greens this week. It's really firm. You've got to have confidence in all your shots. I think the Euros, I mean, I think Roy McIlroy, I cannot make a case to say Roy McIlroy is not going to be the top Euro, plus 320, or that he's not going to be a problem on Sunday. But I look at that board, Terrell Haddon at 10 to 1. Now, the DP World Tour, we actually play every year here at St. Andrews with the Dunhill Lynx. Terrell Haddon, he's won twice, twice there before, likes this golf course. He's one of the best putters on the PGA Tour. And again, he's got that, you know, that dogged, attitude to him i don't care if he's snapping yeah, clubs man. but he's been playing at a decent clip terrell hatton 10 to 1 the value play for me terrell hatton very charismatic on the golf course to yes. say the least so dubsy we take some of those big names in the field not just in that prop market but the finishing positions and maybe find a smaller number a sharper number to finish within the top 10 rory xander jt jordan scotty scheffler john ron names we haven't even mentioned yet who do you expect to have a good week at the Open Championship? 
I think Justin Thomas is prime for one. I think he's playing with house money given he got that second major win there at the PGA. Plus 270 for a top 10. His best finish here, T11th back in 2019. I like that. Colin Morikawa, no one seems to be talking about. He missed the cut last week, but he also did that last year. Then he backs it up and wins at Royal St. George's. His very first open start. And again, this week, the prototype, it's not distance off the tee. It is a chess player. Colin Morikawa, he's one of the best in the business for me. And, and look, what about an Aussie, Cameron Smith? You know you want to see that oh, mullet flowing in the wind late on a Sunday afternoon. It's all short game. Top 10 in bunker play, sand saves on the PGA Tour. What's he not good at with the driver? I don't care this week. Cameron Smith, plus 290 for a top 10. There's some of the names. If you're looking for a bit more value, Benny, and for a couple mm. of young Americans who I think are right on the cusp of pushing inside of the world rankings top 10, Sam Burns, number 11 in the world right now, plus 550, and Max Homer, plus Ooh. 390. A couple of value plays for your top 10 market. Max Homa playing with Tiger Woods in the opening two rounds of this Open Championship. Growing up, idolized the big cat, called it a dream. And he is stoked to get underway at the 150th Open Championship at St. Andrews, the home of golf. Dubsy, we made it like 13 minutes of this segment, and you didn't mention Cam Smith until the very end. I was getting concerned. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, I had a haircut recently, so I lost a bit of faith in uh, the old mullet. But he's back. Okay. The Aussie sensation. we got a rich history with this tournament. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. And Tiger Woods, the big cat, Benny, at a major. He's back. Take it to break. We'll be back in a couple minutes. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. The Pat McAfee Show. Here we are, Wednesday, July 6th, 2022. Baker Mayfield is going to <gasps> the Carolina Panthers. Wow. wow. Congrats to the Carolina Panthers, who for another season are taking a shot on who is going to be our franchise quarterback. And we will run the carousel until we find our guy. Maybe it's Baker. Shout out to the Queen City. The Sports Grid Network. The Bostonian versus the book. Farrah and I oh. played golf at 110 degrees for four hours yesterday. I didn't sweat at all. You melt. You melt just don't sweat. I was baking, but I was not <laughs> sweating. There was no <laughs> sweat to be had. You cannot sweat when it's 110 degrees in Vegas. Jules is really going to appreciate the graphic. Julie Nedlow is soft. <laughs> Hopefully she stays up tonight to watch the replay on sports screen. <laughs> <laughs> I know <laughs> shirt Screenshot this and turn this into a t-shirt. We're the Bostonian versus the book. The early line. Down 6-2 early on in this game against the Pinstripes DRS. The Red Sox score nine unanswered to split this series after losing the first two games of the weekend. It'll be interesting to see as we keep on talking about the trade deadline. The Boston Red Sox, the Tampa Bay Rays, the Toronto Blue Jays, all in those crosshairs where, again, not to win the AL East, but show the Yankees, we're not just going to fold up shop. We meet you in September, late September and October. We want to make sure we have a chance. Only on Sports Grid.
Closing out our two hours together here on the morning after live on this Tuesday on Sports Grid, Sirius XM, Channel 159, the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM, all across the Sports Grid Network. I am Ben Stevens. What a fun Tuesday show it was. A ton of football, some basketball, the Open Championship at St. Andrews, and now we finish with baseball. A big Tuesday slate all across MLB. And we focus on one game tonight in Anaheim, where the Halos are 11 games below 500. They trail the Astros by a ton of games in the American League West. A divisional duel tonight out in Anaheim between those Angels and the Strohs. We'll look at that right now before we say farewell and before we say goodbye because it's time for another Major League Baseball best bet. It is time for Bye Bye Bye. So the Houston Astros have the highest under percentage in all of Major League Baseball. And on the road, that number only ticks up. 69% of the games for Houston away from home this year have hit an under, the most in all of MLB. And in Anaheim, the Angels have the highest under percentage as a home team as well. 61% of the Halos games at home hitting an under. What does that lead us to today with Noah Syndergaard on the bump for Los Angeles and Luis Garcia on the mound for Houston and under of a total at eight. I swear I saw it at nine and a half this morning. I think I was dreaming. I think it was eight and a half and I love that number and it's come down by a hook to eight. I would still go under given the strong track record of both of these teams in these specific scenarios playing to an under. Houston, the highest road percentage on the under and Anaheim, the highest home percentage on the under as well also yeah jack weinberger our associate producer here on the morning after loves the marlins money line tonight because it's taco tuesday night in miami against his pittsburgh pirates take that with a grain of salt the morning after a family here each and every weekday on sports grid it starts at 9 a.m eastern time i'm ben stevens and we'll talk tomorrow